And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Masters of Renaissance. Now, when this game was first announced, I was pretty excited because it was touted as Lorenzo Il Magnifico, which is one of my favorite games, the card game. In fact, it says it here at the bottom, Lorenzo Il Magnifico, the card game. Happily, though, they made that small and put Masters of Renaissance up here, so you know it's a completely different game. And it really is a different game. There's some similarities and there's some production in this game and the cards and art look the same, but they're very different. In fact, I would be hard pressed to call this even a card game any more than the first one was. Maybe this would be better to be called Lorenzo e Magnifico, the smaller game, because there's about as many pieces as this as there was in the, the other game, I feel anyway. Let me show you. In this game, each player is going to have their own player board where they'll be moving along a faith track. Getting to the end of that faith track will trigger the end of the game. And they're also going to be building cards in front of them. And having built seven of these cards will also trigger the end of the game. Now, on a player's turn, you have three different actions. One of these actions is getting resources. And that's where this marble thing comes into play. You pick a row or a column, and that's the resources you get. So, for example, if I pick this column, this row here, for example, I'll get two of the purple resources, one of the blue resource, while white marble gives me nothing. Well, if I pick this column, I'll get one purple resource. I can move my faith token one space on that track and get nothing. So I have to think of the best thing. Let's say I take this one. I'll take the two purples and one blue, so I'll get both of these. Then after I do that, I'll take this loose marble here and I push it on, which makes another marble come out and be loose and changes it for the next player. Now when a player gets resources, they put them in their storage area. You can see you can have one here, two here, three here, and they all have to be the same thing. Which means if I get another purple, I'm not allowed to place it here actually because I can't start a two that have the same. But I could move both these down here, and now I have three purple here, and I can move the blue there. So you have to have three different resources, one, two, and three. You also have a chest down here, but to get uh, things into that, to get things there, is slightly differently. There are four different color buildings and three levels of each here. And you can, on your turn, instead of taking resources, you can pay resources to buy a level. Now, you have to buy the level ones first. You can buy a level two and put it on top of a level one. It uh, doesn't, doesn't have to even be the same color. So let's say I have two blue and two yellow. So I spend those on my turn, and I build this in front of me. And then later on, maybe I'll build this one. And then later on, I'll build this one and put it on top of the other one that I built. And that brings us to the third action you can take in your turn, which is production. When you're doing production, you basically can run your buildings. Now, you can always turn two resources into another resource. Here, I can turn a purple and a gray into two yellows and a faith point. By the way, I'm saying the colors. I know it's stone and gold, etc. Or here, I can turn a purple into two faith points. You can only use each of these once, and you cannot use resources that you got from one to activate another. But I might use this one for example. I'll turn this purple into a faith, which moves me one on the faith point track, or two faith on the faith point track. And then I'll turn these two in for a gold coin. Now I'll turn them in for a gray, maybe. So I use this one and this one. And that's pretty much what you can do. But the big thing about it is, when you turn stuff into resources, the, the resources actually go down here. Whenever you produce stuff, the resources go down here, which is what I did now. So as time goes by, that's how you can store resources up, up here by getting the machines running because some of the buildings are going to require things like this building here requires six gold. Well, you can't even get six gold up here, so you're going to need to run buildings for that to happen. Now, faith points, the reason you're getting these is because when you get, when somebody gets to this Pope symbol that's at, on the board, the first time someone gets there, everyone's going to check. If you have your marker inside this area, which obviously the person who moved it there does, you can turn this over and get, you'll get that many points at the end of the game. Otherwise, you discard it. 
and you can't get that. And so there's one for each. And you can see that these are bonus points of two, three, and four. Not to mention at the end of the game, you'll get points for how far you pass. Buildings are also going to be getting you points as you build these cards on the board. And you can see the biggest buildings, the level three, is going to be worth quite a few number of points. And then players are also going to have leaders. At the beginning of the game, you'll get some leaders, and you're going to choose... Um, which leaders to keep. You can always discard a leader from your hand for no reason at all, just to move up one on the faith track. But you can also, as a bonus action on your turn, dis as long as you meet the requirements at the top, play this leader card in front of you. So for example, this one, I need two green buildings and a purple building. If I do this, I can play this leader in front of me, worth five points at the end of the game, but also, White marbles now, instead of giving me no resource, give me a blue resource. And so there's all sorts of things. Some have like a production thing on them here, uh, this leader. But they all have points here. If I built one of every color building, then this person is worth eight points. If I spend five, I have an extra special storage area here where I can store blue resources. So knowing what leaders to pick and getting the stuff to play them is another part of the game. Like I said... If someone gets to the end of the track, or if someone builds seven buildings, the game ends. You add your points from here, here, and your leader cards that you've played, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So obviously this marble thing here is a, that of great renown. There's just something about it, about when you push the marbles off and then it rolls down the chute. It's more fun when you push off the, the row and then it just rolls. I don't know why this is fun or why it's as entertaining as it is, but it is kind of interesting because you're trying to figure out the best row or column for you. And as you do that, you know, I look here and say, well, this one's good. It's two grays and a purple. The whites are kind of a pain in the neck, but if you get one of those leaders that makes them more valuable, that's pretty neat. But this is uh, just a little plastic piece that fits inside this board. The marbles are fairly light plastic marbles. The cards themselves, I mean, it's really just changed stuff into other stuff. The, you know, the little tokens or little wooden tokens, they might be a little smaller than I prefer. But the board and the leader cards, it's the same artwork that we've seen, you know, in other games, and particularly Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Um, but the components themselves are pretty good, even though, like I said, they kind of make me say this isn't really a card game. Now, Masters of Renaissance does not come to the heights of Lorenzo Il Magnifica, and I don't think you should necessarily compare the two of them, so I'm not to, other than saying that the first one is one of my favorite games, and this one I find to be a very good game, just not in the same league. But this one is a much lighter game. Now, this game is about collecting resources, and it has a really wonky system. I, It's one of those times where you're like, really? That, what's your theming purpose for that? I have a shelf that can hold one item, a shelf that can hold two, and a shelf that can hold three. They can only hold the same items, and none of the three can have the same item. Because rules! And that's really what it is. They're just to stop you from buying some of the big cards early in the game. Fine, I just think it's a weird theming for that rule. But that is a very thing about this game, is getting those resources. So the only way to get resources in the bottom where you have unlimited, whatever you can put there, you need to build a little machine and run it. And that's what this game's about. It's about getting a little machine and running it. So you're gonna get these cards, you're gonna build small cards, look for ones that will give you the resources that you can then run that machine later on another turn and use those resources to get even more resources to then build the buildings you want that work with hopefully the leaders you got in your hand. Pretty simple, it's not a long game. We'll talk about an hour. Here's the distracting and yet fun part of the game is those marbles. Call them stupid, call it a gimmick, it's definitely true. Also doesn't make any sense thematically, but I like pushing the marble out and getting the resource. That's fun. It's fun to look at it and try to figure out which row or column will help you out best. And then there's just something incredibly satisfying about putting that marble there. But then you get the resources and you can sit there while other people go, kind of think about what you're gonna do next turn. You can't really watch the marble thing because it's gonna change and even more so in a three or four player game, it's gonna change too much for you to worry about. But the game keeps at a brisk pace. I'm gonna take some resources, I'm gonna run my machines, I'm gonna buy a card, that's it. And I like it, it's fast, it's interesting, and the idea of running that machine is not as grandiose and complex as other games is. It's very simple and small, 
but it works in this setting. Again, I'd be very hesitant to call this a card game, but as a board game, I did enjoy it. Check it out. That's Masters of Renaissance. Our judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.